Another year, another stage. The Sonic Amateur Games Expo is an online event where fan game and indie game devs come together to showcase their passion projects. The best part is that we, the general public, can try them out, give feedback, and marvel at what can be accomplished by ambitious developers. This video is going to cover the games that I'm mostly associated with playing, the Sonic fan games. I'm going to dedicate videos to other entries, but this time, let's see what adventures our blue argument starter will endure. Just a heads up, I'm not going to cover every single fan game, that would be a lot for one video. Not all of them are going to be my favorite, but maybe you'll find some enjoyment with them. Real quick, before we get to that video, here's a sponsor, Skillshare. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Recently, I was in a position where I needed to improve my presence on social media, for my brand and for a group brand. So I went to Sophia Chang's course on how to create a digital presence. Though Instagram is covered in this alone, I'm confident that I can use what I've learned and apply it to other platforms. The best part is that I can learn at my own pace, at my own time, with their ad-free service that lets me jump back into a lesson at my earliest convenience. If you want to pick up a new skill or refine a current skill, you can join with the link provided in the description. In fact, the first 1,000 people to use the link will receive a free month of Skillshare. So go ahead and give it a shot, and a huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. One more thing to note, I won't be covering Sonic and the Fallen Star and Sonic Triple Trouble 16-bit in this video. I do want to bring this up because they are the two big fan games that released in June and July. Fantastic 2D fan games with amazing visuals, and they are definitely worth your time. Although I won't really be covering it in this video, I will provide a link in the description if you wish to play it. Now, let's cover the rest. So, I gotta own up to a video I'm ashamed of. Last year I made a video on Sonic Momentum, and the video sucked. I didn't grasp the concept of the game, and I did a great job of making a fool of myself, and slammed it. That game didn't deserve the treatment, so I'm going to give it another chance. Visually, the game looks fantastic. I love that there are three time of day options that make slight or major adjustments to the two existing levels. The music and sound design is also really well done. No complaints for me there. When it comes to the gameplay, you can play it like a traditional Sonic game, and there is some fun in doing that. However, there are going to be some obvious differences between the traditional games and this one. Rolling through loops is not very satisfying since it does slow you down a lot. The idea is that you need to not be in a ball to make it through these loops easier, which is done with the push of a button. There are some more minor stuff to unlearn to get the most out of the platforming in this game, but it's fine. The big addition to this Sonic game is the combat. With the jump and action buttons, you can chain together combos to knock around badniks. On paper, this is very interesting. Unfortunately, it just never clicked with me. I guess my issue is that I found some of the maneuvers a bit odd to execute. Big offenders had to be the spin dash redirection and the stomp. This can easily be fixed by making it a button combo with the B button on an Xbox controller, since you're using X for the action button, A for jumping, and Y for wisps. It didn't mess me up that much in combat, but when I'm trying to get around the two levels, accidentally rolling does get a bit annoying. But I will say the times that I was able to maintain an S rank through the combat was pretty satisfying. I did try to play as Tails and Knuckles, but I found the most enjoyable parts of the game were the times that I was playing as Sonic. I think he has the best overall moveset. There is a Chow system where you can raise a Chow and evolve it with certain conditions like going at top speed, staying in the air for a long distance, and its alignment will change with Dark, Neutral, and Hero. There's a breakdown on the page if you want to see it for yourself, but I don't think it was implemented in this build. I feel like I got the wrong version of the game despite the fact that it's labeled as version 1.40, but when I open up the game it's version 1.30. Anyways, I just wanted to try it out, give it another go, see if I missed anything, and I definitely did, but it's still a game that doesn't really click with me very well. And unlike the last video, I'm going to say it. Give this game a shot. See if it's something that's up your alley. Even though I had my struggles with the game, I think it's an interesting concept that I'd like to see more of. So I'll keep an eye on its development. 2D Sonic games are a dime a dozen, but I think Sonic Hoshi really has something here. The level design is pretty well thought out, the music is fantastic, the visuals are on point, the best one being the ice level. So what's different about this one? Well the drop dash has been replaced with the star dash. It allows Sonic to dash in one of four directions and, with the game's physics, can make for some exhilarating 2D platforming. In the Mystic Mine it can also lead into leaping over large parts of the level, which is kinda cool. But you're not gonna be able to span this all the time since there is a cooldown. And I think it's better that way. The bosses are okay, though with the Star Dash it becomes even easier to get some extra hits in. Though that's more of an issue with 2D Sonic boss design in general. It's either too easy or too hard, with very few examples of anything in between. Tails is playable and he has the ability to fly. 
Although one of the strangest things is his flying animation. It seems like being able to fly upwards shouldn't be possible when he's standing upright. But whatever, it's a minor nitpick. The game takes place after Sonic 2 as the beginning of the game shows the end of the confrontation with the Death Egg. Later in the demo, things get pretty nuts when a certain event happens. I refuse to spoil it, but it's pretty wild. Also, this game just plays really well, even though the action button is on the X button for an Xbox controller. But that's just minor. Anyways, play it, if you can. Sonic Revisited is a recreation of Sonic 1 in the Orbanaut engine. Though the game is presented in widescreen, the game is aiming to replicate the Sega Genesis original. So if you've seen a game like Sonic 2 Community's Cut, then you have an idea of what I'm talking about. It looks and plays pretty close, though there are specific parts of the game that will go unnoticed by the average player. There is a segment where in the first act you can die for going too fast, this game doesn't really have that, so... Good. The spike bug is returned, though I don't have much to say except it's parts of Sonic 1 and I like it so far. Green Hill Zone is complete, Spring Yard Zone and Starlight Zone are missing Act 3 bosses, and the rest has yet to be implemented, including the special stages, and I look forward to seeing more of this in the future. With Sonic Frontiers releasing in less than two months, it makes sense that someone will try to go out of their way to make a game in a similar style. With open zone areas that contain enemies and collectibles, with ways to play more straightforward levels, Sonic and Shadow tries to create a similar experience. The opening cutscene is a trip. It uses clips from the opening of Sonic Unleashed, Shadow Story in Sonic 06, and an in-game cutscene from Sonic 06. It's really odd to see. So are the in-game cutscenes that use sound bites for the two characters with stock art from different titles. Shadow, what are you doing? <laughs> As for the gameplay, it's in the... Oh god, this runs like absolute ass. Sadly, this is in the Infinity Engine. It was really noticeable as I recognized the weird jump animation and getting stuck in an enemy I was trying to hit with a homing attack. I'm pretty sure the animation glitch is on my end, probably due to the refresh rate of my monitor. It plays like an Infinity Engine fan game, so if you've played one, you know what you're getting into. With one exception, some of Sonic and Shadow's abilities are not available at the start, requiring the player to purchase them with the golden medals scattered throughout the open zone. Thankfully, areas can be found with a provided map, though you can only really find the levels and shops there. The levels are going to have some kind of barrier to entry, giving you some kind of requirement for it. They can be crystals that you pick up, or give you a requirement of how many levels you need to beat before you can enter. And thankfully, the crystals can respawn after re-entering an open zone. Aside from that, the levels are nothing special. Use a bunch of homing attacks, or use the sometimes functioning boost to fly over sections. I found myself not enjoying either method since most paths can be easily accessible. There's no focused route because it's too open. The one boss I battled... exists. Two stationary robots that shoot projectiles that might hit Shadow instead of Sonic. There's no real movement, and there's no making the player figure out a strategy to fight them. Just run in and homing attack to your heart's content. Something should be noticeable with the gameplay, and it's something I touched on earlier. The performance. Like, dude, what the hell is this? Okay, I'm being a bit harsh. There can be some work done with optimization, and having a better way of switching music could help as well. Either that, or add some ambient music in its place, because the way it plays now can be a bit disorienting, and players might be a little overwhelmed with two songs playing in separate directions. I would also like to see the crystal requirement brought down a bit, because honestly, it's not that fun to go seek them out and then run all the way to a level just to enter it. Even with its issues with level design or just from the game engine itself, if you want to try it out, go ahead, give it a shot. It's an interesting look at what we might get in about two months. This is something else. Sonic Lock and Load is Doom 2 with a Sonic theme around it. Well, it's only related to everything except for the enemies. You can jump, slide, and attack with a unique attack for each character. The unique items are Sonic's Sword Caliburn, Amy's Pico Pico Hammer, and Shadow's... Spear? I don't know much about this one. And finally, classic Sonic's nothing. He technically has an insta shield, so it's not like going empty handed puts him at a disadvantage. Even the Doom weapons change from character to character, and each one is a variant on some base weapon from Doom 2. They have their standard shot with a special shot that does more damage to enemies but costs energy. This can be acquired by picking up these special energy rings or hitting energy item boxes. There's a lot to play with to get the most out of the one level in the demo. At least, that's all I was able to find. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know. And I wish I could replicate the pure excitement I had playing this mod. That excitement would immediately turn to dread as soon as I kicked this orb to bring out the Cyber Demon. 
This is one of two boss fights in this build, and now the fear of God is fresh in my soul. With Sonic and Shadow, this guy takes a bit of time to defeat, but it is doable. As Amy, I don't think it's happening. And as Classic Sonic, yeah. There is a hidden orb that's assigned to three of the four playable characters that gives you a secret boss fight, the Spider Demon. Okay, so I know what I'm supposed to do here, but the window to attack is far too small, making it difficult for me to even land one hit without dying. There are more hidden items in this demo that I didn't really touch on because I don't want to spoil it, so I do recommend trying this out. You are going to need a copy of Doom 2 to play this, so you can buy it on Steam, and I believe it's about $5. I am going to keep an eye on this project because this thing is pretty cool. I also like Doom. I don't know what drew me to this fan game, but I had some desire to play it. Another Sonic 2 remake is a fan remake of the 8-bit Sonic 2, and it definitely looks fan-made. Some of you might look at this and say it's probably jank on purpose, or this is a meme entry, but this game controls pretty well. Yeah, it clashes like crazy when the sprites are hand-drawn, the ground looks like assets from existing Sonic games, and the background looks like it went through one of those gross smoothing features you find on emulators. But I'm digging how jank this looks. I said it on stream, but it's jank in all of the right ways. Gameplay-wise, it controls pretty well. Sonic now has access to the Super Peelout and the Drop Dash with the Elemental Shields. They work like they do in the games they came from, except for the Fire Shield. You can use that in more areas because it doesn't force you to only jump to be able to use it. You can use it when you run off a ramp or something. The Hang Glider works more like the Cape Power-Up from Super Mario World, where all you have to do is hold the jump button to glide. Unfortunately, there's no way to gain altitude. That would have been really sick. And I think it's better to do that than whatever the hell you had to do in the original game. The bosses have been changed and they're no longer one-to-one, -one, but I'd say they're pretty fair. Some of the level design has changed to compensate for the different game engine, and it's done to great results. With the exception of Sky High Zone Act 2. I don't think that one's designed very well. But it's a minor blemish on what is otherwise a fun remake. And a thing that I thought was really cool is that the final zone does this silhouette like in Sonic Limbo, if you've played that hack before. And it looks really cool. And I say this is absolutely worth your time. There's not a lot to play here, but what is here is pretty good. Give it a shot. Okay, this is a brief one, but this is an early look at Sonic Adventure on Nintendo DS. There's no audio, but the game does look pretty nice even with the lower resolution and the lower quality models. I find that there's a bit of charm to games that look like this, so I like it. The physics are off, the controls are pretty rough, and you have to hold a button to levitate to a platform because the jumping isn't exactly right. But if you know me, you know I love Sonic Adventure, so this is something I wanted to highlight. Not sure if you're exactly willing to play it, but if you want to, go for it. It's another cool idea, and I want to keep an eye on it. Mostly because it's Sonic Adventure on the go, once I mod my 3DS. I hear it's easy to do. And now we have some Super Mario 64 ROM hacks, because I like the game, so why not? Remember the video that I dedicated to Chow Bandstand? Well, this is Super Cream 64 The Grand Finale. The setup is that Vanilla wants to surprise Cream for her birthday, rented a huge castle, and even invited villains to it as long as they didn't cause too much trouble. Like Dr. Eggman. Cream keeps all of her moves from that game as she goes through three levels to gather red coins. Technically they're green rings, but they work like red coins in Super Mario 64. That's all for this demo, but it looks and sounds amazing. I love how clean the music is, and on top of that, significant work has been done for the final boss of the demo. The ending is similar to Mario 64, but there are new voice lines for the ending, and I think it's a great addition. I'm just gonna tell you, give this one a go. But then again, I like Super Mario 64, and it controls mostly like that game, and I'm pretty biased towards it. Play it. Sonic in Mario's mind is a weird game. The idea is that Mario fell asleep and can't wake up, so Sonic needs to jump into his dream or nightmare, collect the stars, and fight the boss to help out his plumber friend. The game looks great, and the audio is very clean considering that this is on a Nintendo 64. Level design-wise, it felt like an odd mix of Sonic Adventure and Super Mario 64 that would work if it wasn't for the controls, because the controls are pretty rough. The issue is that Sonic can move freely in mid-air, making it a lot harder to land on smaller platforms. The homing attack requires you to be close to whatever you're aiming at, and if you miss your brief window, you're going to fall. This game does have variety with each level, one is just getting to the end, the second one is getting all the red coins, and the last one is a boss fight. The boss fight is a bit of a tough one, but can be figured out. At first, I didn't know you could throw these bob at the tentacles to give an opening. Once I knew that I could do that, it all fell into place. 
I would only recommend playing this hack if you are familiar with other Sonic and Mario 64 hacks that use this game's version of Sonic's controls, or if you're just willing to learn through this hack alone. For more casual players, it's going to be a tough one to recommend. And that's some of the games for Stage 2022. I know I didn't cover everything because there's so much to look at. I mentioned Sonic and the Fallen Star, Sonic Triple Trouble, but there were two Sonic Writers projects as well. There will be some time to look at those games, but I also need to get better at those games to give them a proper look. If you're interested in any of these games or fan games or hacks, there's going to be a link in the description for all of them, so feel free to check it out. And that'll just about do it for the video, so thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like and sub if you're new. At this time, I want to shout out the channel members and patrons. They are the ones supporting the channel with a monthly contribution. The Chaos tier members have their names scrolling on the bottom of the screen, but the Super tier members get a verbal shout out. They are Dork in a Hat, Tactical Discord, Martin YT Plays, and Ryan Rolves over on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your extra support. It is greatly appreciated. You are all awesome. And if you want to join as well, you can find out with the join button below this video. Or if you want to use Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash gotta be frank. If you want updates or want to know what I'm up to, you can check out my social media links. I have Twitter, Discord. I have my Twitch TV page that I'm going to be coming back to pretty soon. Instagram, uh, TikTok if you're into it. I have them all, I think. Those will also be in the description of this video. And with that, that's going to do it for today. I hope you all have a wonderful and safe day. And until next time, take care. I'll see you in the next one.